To begin the mug cozy, use a fingering weight yarn and size four needles. Either DPNs or 42 inch circular needles for magic loop. You will need about 60 inches of a tail. Make a slip knot at that approximate 60 inch mark. Place the slip knot on your needle. Place both strands of yarn between the pinky and ring fingers of your left hand with the palm up. Make a fist, dive your thumb and index finger between the two strands making sure that the tail end is the strand in front of your thumb and the strand coming from the ball is the strand going over the top of your index finger. Fold your hand back to palm up position. This creates an X configuration in front of your thumb. The German twisted long tail cast on is, for, is more stretchy and more substantial than a regular twisted long tail cast on. Bring your needle in front of the X on your thumb and underneath. Come back through the loop on your thumb and toward your body. Go all the way back to your index finger and grab that strand of yarn with the needle. Drop your thumb down to untwist the X. Then bring the strand on your needle through the untwisted X and forward toward your body. Drop your thumb out of the X and rewrap your thumb and fold it back again to make another X and tighten up the stitch formed on the needle. Repeat those steps. Grab that yarn, unfold your X, bring your yarn through again toward you, drop your thumb yarn, rewrap, and pull it tight. Under the X, through the X toward you, over to the other yarn, back through the unfolded X, uncrossed X I guess it is, drop your thumb yarn, rewrap your thumb, fold it back, under, through, over, through, drop, wrap, under, through, over, through, drop, wrap, under, through, over, through, drop, wrap, under, through, over, through, drop, wrap. You need 60 stitches cast on. I have 55 stitches, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Working flat, not in the round yet, work three rows of knit one, purl one ribbing. At the beginning of the fourth row of knit one, purl one. We're going to cast on five stitches. So knit a stitch and put it back on your needle by twisting that stitch back onto the left needle. Knit, put it back on the left needle by twisting it. There's two three, there's four, there's five, so we want to knit 
those stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then do your first knit stitch on your knit purl roll. Knit purl, knit purl, knit. Knit one, purl one across. You're going to be knitting this way on your new cast on stitches with this yarn coming from the back to the front. So you need to wind your yarn onto the ring. I'm going to go that, like that, like that. I'm going to use every post. Because this yarn, it is wool, it is very nice, it is not super grabby, it will work just fine this close to the next yarn, which is red, with that on the back. To the front. Okay, that's one way to wind your yarn onto the post of the knitting uh, knit assist ring. bit. I have to hang on to the red while I start my pattern. Put my lid on. Sometimes this top can pop off so I use a wedge to keep those posts spread out so that my top doesn't pop off. All right. Okay, this is my setup. I have my pattern ready for me. I use a magnetic board. I have a marker that is magnetized to that board. I put my marker above the row I'm working on. When I get to this point, I'll be able to see the pattern below as well as the pattern below on the work I've been doing, so I'll know if my, the stitches I'm about to make make sense. That's why I mark. Instead of marking from below, I mark from above so that I can see the work I've already done. I'm starting to knit in the round. My yarn needs to be behind this needle I need to knit one stitch and the first stitch is going to be white and I'm going to make that stitch very tight otherwise I have a giant ladder, a ladder, a hole. So I'm going to pull that up tight and hold that stitch with this finger. Then I kind of need to hang on to this too. So this stitch is tight. This stitch needs to be red. These are my steak stitches. And I find that I cast on too many stitches, too many uh, steak stitches. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And knit these two together in white. Now I am starting my pattern. Four whites, two reds, one, two, three, four. Four whites. I've already done one white, so I need to catch my float. 
I go over both uh, yarns, catch that white, and come back. That catches that red yarn in the back. I need to stretch these stitches to the right. One of the most important skills to develop in stranded knitting is learning to stretch out the stitches on the right needle. If you don't, the floats will make the fabric way too tight and inflexible. Two, three, four, two reds, one, two, you see how the yarn just pulls through the ring on the posts. Four whites. Watch how that pulls through the posts. One, two, and it doesn't bother this yarn at all because it's separate and tensioned. Catch a float. See how, because this is tensioned, this pulls back usually and doesn't get pulled up so you can see it in the front. my four, one red, four whites, one, two, three, Four, two reds, five whites at the end. One, two, three, four, five. But because you're coming back and doing four more whites, you have a total of nine white stitches. So you need to catch your float at least twice, in my opinion. You can do whatever you like. One, two, three, four, five. Drop that needle, pull it up, flip it around. Make sure your yarns are in front. I don't want to catch that float because it's stitch number six. Pull that up a little bit tight. The other thing you don't want to do with your float is make a crease in your fabric. So you have to work this fabric out. And continue in pattern. Just a little word about the ring and the angle. If you place the post parallel to your finger, the string, the, the yarn comes out perpendicular to the, to the work. If you angle the ring, they come out across your finger instead of perpendicular to, to your finger. It's easier to grab the, the yarn with your needle tip. It's angled. I like it that way. You can fiddle with it any way you want because it's uh, an octagon. Op octagon. 
You can change the angle of that any way you like. This is the way I like it. So I'm continuing on. I have four whites, two reds, one, two, three, four, four whites, one red, four whites, four whites, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, two. One, two, get my tail out of the way. Catch a float, stretch my float. Oops. Finish my row. Now we're going to move to row two. So slide your marker up. Now maybe you can see what I'm talking about. I will be able to see that I, what I've accomplished and what I need to do on top of what I've accomplished. Turn this over. Don't forget your stick stitches. Okay, on this this is one way to do your steak, and that's in a checkerboard pattern, opposites, where you knit white on the last row, you knit red, and vice versa. Another way to do your steak is to do the same color in five columns. That's what we're going to try this time. So we're doing white. Tighten it up, red, white, red, white. Now start your pattern with one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, two reds, one, two, three, four. Stretch those out. Three whites, three reds, three whites, one. No need to catch a float. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and another one, two, three, four pattern. Two reds, one, two, three, four, five. Turn your work. Needle back through. Pull your back needle up. 
and start the pattern over again on row two. Red, pull that up tight and hang on to it. White, red, white, two reds, one, two, three, four, three whites, one, two, three, three reds, one, two, three, three whites, one, 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 two reds, Let's do row three, and I think you should be able to get it from there. Steak stitches. Okay, white, red. When I talk to myself about patterns, I just give myself numbers. One, one, four, two, one, one. I can remember that far. One, one, four, two, one, one. That just reminds me that whenever I change a number, I need to change a color. So I have one, one, four, One, one, four, two, one, one. It's really pretty easy also if you can keep your pattern right underneath your work. That makes it super simple. Now I need two whites. And five reds. One, two. Catch a float on the red. You go underneath the white, grab that red, and pull that up. Now you go over the white to get the red, and that catches the white float. Two whites. One. One. Two. Four. Okay, repeat that on the other 30 stitches. Let's do half of one more row, the, the first needle's worth of one more row. Okay, scoot my needle back. Scoot this needle forward. This is one, 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 one. One, two, three, four, five of the same, of switching off colors. One white, tighten it up, 
hold on to it. One red. Three. Four. Five. Four reds. One, one, one. One. Two. Under the white. Three. Four. One. One. And that makes three columns that are the same. A white column, a red column, and a white column. Now, I'm, this is a diagonal design. So I need a red over here. One. Two. Three. And a white one in the middle. One. Stretch that out. Two. Three. One. 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 Four. Look at this pattern. These two colors are the same and these two are not. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oops, that needs to be white. That needs to be red. That needs to be white. That needs to be red. Now, do the same thing on the next needle. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white stitches. You're going to catch your float at least twice, uh, maybe three times, and then do two, one, two, three, two, one, two. And then you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches on the on your first needle and keep going in white. So you have 17 white stitches. You're going to catch your float at least five times in that 17 white stitches. Eight here, nine here. These nine will be on your next needle. So perhaps we should do that together. We have, oops, get my tails out of the way. Stooch up my first stitch. Maybe even the second one. Third one I'm gonna catch. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Even if you decided that you don't mind a five stitch or even a seven stitch float, you really should not carry a seventeen stitch float. If you carry that long of a float, especially from one needle to the next, you'll have a very annoying long strand that could pucker the fabric ridiculously. Two reds. One white. Two reds. Stretch this out a little. Three whites. Red. Sometimes the yarn gets too stretched out and your finger just cannot go any higher. Just stop and pull the yarn back through the ring and or rearrange the angle of the ring on your finger. Uh, one white. Two reds. Okay, now I need to count 17 whites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
I'm going to try to wrap my float on the next stitch on the first on the next needle. So I am going to go over the red, catch the white, and make my stitch. When you start knitting on a new needle, instead of holding your needles parallel to each other, beside each other, angle your needles 45 to 90 degrees so that your first couple of stitches and any floats will create a fabric that is flat with no holes when it's off the needles. Tighten up. That's 10, 11, oops, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. No finger catching loops. Two reds. Scrunch my work up so it's more accessible. One white, two reds, three whites, stretch, two reds, one white, two reds. Eight whites to finish off. One. Oops. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, 